All right, so here, yeah, here gets more fun. All right, so we've got a motor uh, that is turning this wheel right here. Or no, here's the motor, I think, uh, that, that is used to turn this wheel and attached blower. All right, so pulley A connected to the motor begins to rotate from rest with a constant, you see that, angular acceleration of two radians per second. So this smaller, the smaller wheel with a, a radius of 0.15 is rotating with an angular acceleration of two. Um, let, let's forget what the problem is asking for just a second. We're gonna come back to that. Forget what the problem is asking for a second. If that smaller wheel is rotating with an angular acceleration of two, and it's connected to this larger wheel by this belt or rope type thing. How can we kind of, I don't know, jump from wheel A to wheel B? Is there something the same for wheel A and wheel B? Um, maybe that alpha is two for wheel A, maybe alpha is two for wheel B. No. Any ideas for how to, what's the same for both wheels? Let's forget about that alpha of two. If wheel one was rotating at, you know, one RPM, let's say wheel, wheel A goes one revolution. Wheel A rotates one revolution. Does wheel B rotate one revolution? If this spins one revolution, that small wheel spins one revolution around, how far does wheel B spin around? Does it spin, does it spin one revolution? The circumference of the smaller one, yeah. I mean, does that make sense? Look at this green line that I just drew. If wheel A spins one revolution, then I just drew that green line. Wheel B would spin whatever that same length is. Let's talk about velocities. Let's talk about velocities. Let's think about velocities. How can I, what's the same on wheel A and wheel B? They are proportional, yeah, by the radiuses, yeah, absolutely. Let's, let's get there. How about this? The velocity on the edge of this wheel would be the velocity of the rope, right? Would also be the velocity on the edge of that wheel right does that make sense the velocity on the edge of the smaller wheel would be the velocity of the rope and that would also be the velocity on the edge of the larger wheel so it's not that the angular information is the same from a to b what is the same from a to b the linear information on the edge of a equals the linear information on the edge of b does that make sense the linear info I'll say on the edge of a equals the linear info on the edge of B and that's how we can jump from a to B that's how we can jump from a to B knowing that the linear so so like um, the velocity on the edge of A equals velocity on the edge of B. Uh, but also the, we kind of talked about this, this green line, the arc length on the edge of A equals the arc length on the edge of B. One more, the tangential acceleration on the edge of A equals A tangential on edge of B. And so, this is how I would do it. 
something like we can do r a theta a right because s is r theta we could do r a theta a equals r b theta b we could do r a uh, omega a equals r b omega b and r a alpha a r b alpha b and so that's how i jump so yes james and, and a lot of y'all might have thought this and y'all can do this i'm, I'm going to do that i'm going to do you know if, if i'm looking at accelerations which i think is what i'm looking at that two right there i'm going to say r a alpha a equals r b alpha b so that i can find alpha of b all right so yes you can kind of rearrange this the alpha of b would be r a alpha a over r b so yes the um alphas are off by a ratio of the radiuses but i like to organize my thoughts this way so this this blue box right here this blue information that's how you can jump from a to b because because what happened i was given some information about a and then in the next sentence we're going to read it's asking me for hey calculate this that's on b well you didn't give me the information of b you gave me information for a but because they're connected by that rope i can kind of jump from the smaller to the larger okay so here we go uh we can do this determine the magnitudes of the velocity and acceleration of point p uh, determine the magnitude and velocity of the acceleration of point P um, after the pulley A has gone two revolutions. After the pulley A has gone two revolutions. Four. So for problems like this, I know it's a constant acceleration problem. And I want to use my constant acceleration equations. You need to choose where to use your constant acceleration equations. You have some options. You have some options. You can use your constant acceleration equations on pulley A. You can get your final answers and then jump that final answer to pulley B. Um, or you can go ahead and jump all the initial information to pulley B and do all your math and all your equations on pulley B. Sometimes, one might be a little easier than the other. Sometimes it doesn't matter. I just like to just kind of look at, okay, what am I given and what am I trying to find? And if I'm given a lot of information about one pulley, then maybe I just go ahead and do all my math, all my equations on that pulley, and then I'll jump my answer. So what I'm going to do, since I'm given this acceleration alpha of A, and I'm given that theta A goes two revolutions, I'm going to do constant acceleration equation for pulley a the, the smaller pulley and looking at all those equations uh this one right here theta i don't know state initial this one right here would allow me to solve for omega final and then i'm gonna jump that from pulley A, this is all A, 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 all this is at A. I'm going to use that equation to get the velocity of A and then jump it to B. All right. All right. So <clears throat> it started from rest. So two, it has an uh, angular acceleration of two as well. And then it goes two revolutions but I'm not going to uh, plug in two revolutions. I'm gonna plug in four pi revolutions so that I'm in radians. All right, so my omega final would be 7.09 radians per second. It didn't ask for the angular velocity of A, it asked for the linear velocity of point p which is on the other wheel so let me jump let me pin 
Let me jump. Okay. Let me jump from A to B. How can I jump from A to B? How can I jump from A to B? Right? This would be all right. Yeah, maybe it's a sun. How do <laughs> R R omega of A R A omega A equals R B omega B. Right? Don't do that. R A omega A equals R B omega B. There we go. R B omega B. So this, here we go. Point one five. 7.09 would equal 0.4 omega b. So omega of b is 2.66 radians per second. All right, 2.66 radians per second. All right, but again, sorry, it didn't ask for the angular velocity of b. It asked for the linear, the, the speed on point p. It asked for the speed on point p. How can I take this, and I'm kind of going around the block. I already had this answer. How can I take that and find the velocity of point P? The velocity of point P is R omega. Velocity of point P is R. R is how far is P from the, um, how far is point P from the center of revolution point four um, times 2.66. So this would be 1.06 meters per second that is the velocity of p that is the velocity of p all right so preview that preview that and think about we haven't finished that we're going to finish that one you might need to plug in an extra sheet of paper if you run out of room uh to find the acceleration but you but look look step back before you leave step back and let's think about this i was given some information about a but then it was asking me about b how do I jump from A to B? R omega of um, A equals R B omega of B. Now, I decided to do my equations on A and then jump my final answer. I could have jumped that two, two revolutions and the two radius per second. I could have jumped those to B and then done my acceleration equation on B. Okay. All right. That's it.